All right, it's 135 to beat Miami's do that one for hip hop, RB, and the Breakfast Club. My little homie pulled up. Well, you know what? He actually hit me up the other day and said, Yo, I want to pull up on you. I said, My God, this is for you. You know what I mean? Anytime you're ready, man. But this kid, he's been persistent, doing his thing, humble, supportive. Like, if every artist could be this guy, you know, the the, the world would be a better place, man. King Hoodie in the building! Yeah! What's yeah. good? What's good? The one and only, man. How I'm, you doing? I'm so happy to be here, man. No, Honestly. again, I'm going to say it again and again. You deserve to be here, brother. Oh, you know, that putting means a lot, lot of work. If every radio DJ personality could be like Papa <laughs> Keith, the world would be a better place. You know what I'm talking about? I don't mind you piggybacking that one, I'm right? Telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's real. So give, a, give everybody a little background. Start where you're from originally. You know, you have a you have an exotic look to you, so yeah. a lot of people probably were like, where is he from, you know? I get Samoan a lot. They're like, yo, you, yeah, are you Samoan? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I've never even met a Samoan in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't be it. Nah, I'm, I'm Haitian and Puerto Rican, born and raised in Miami, North Miami Beach. Um, yeah, yeah, we had this. NMB, we yeah. had this discussion yeah. before. You yeah. let me know you went to NMB. I went to I went to JFK Ooh. and I went to NMB. That's right. So we Jail for it. kids. Jail and then for I'm, kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then and then I, I then I was a charger. You know what I mean? Love it, man. Love it. See, this is meant to be and, and meant absolutely, to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's what's up. So, how did the music find you? Man, music has always been in my household. So my father, he he got a big music catalog. I'm always listening to everything. Like. The one song that was always playing in my house was uh, Red, Red Wine. Red, Red, Red Wine. wine. That UB40, yeah, yeah, and then it blew my mind when I realized it was white. That yeah. was mind-blowing to yeah. me. Yeah. But like that, Aaron Neville, like a whole bunch of music. He was always playing music, and my mother was always playing music. So it was something that was in me, but I never felt like I could do it. Then I had friends start getting into it, right. but they didn't let me in until like I started getting in myself. So What makes you so special to me is that you're not the atypical rapper here from South mm. Florida. All right, so I want to dive into that because I want you to have an opportunity to say how it may work for you, and then talk about how sometimes it may not work for you. Mm. All right, um, we used to have a, a term for you know rappers, you know back in the day more so they used to call them backpack rappers. Oh, yeah. Ones that were more conscious. Even mm -hmm. Kanye West was considered backpack rapper at one time. You know what I'm saying? They were more like focused on like building consciousness positive messages and stuff like that where hip hop's growth and popularity was more about the negativity some of the violence some of the disrespectful stuff towards women and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. what i mean um but we still had an appreciation for hip hop as a music and backpack played a big role in that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um so i don't know if that term still is around right now but you know can you talk about your style of hip hop absolutely um, and I would love actually the background on the backpack because I'm like, why did they even call y'all backpackers? I remember that. Like, was y'all just rolling around with backpacks? Like, yes. Like, yeah, <laughs> they had studio equipment yes, in there. Yes. It was like notebooks and studio equipment. Yes. Oh, okay. Notebooks, studio equipment, some backpacks with Jan Sports, some with Louis bags. Oh, oh. You know oh, what I mean? But oh. it was backpacks. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, like, so for me, nowadays they just say conscious. At any point in time you got lyrics, they just naturally categorize you as a conscious rapper. Gotcha. And they don't really make a lot of sense because you're not really saying that. I'm not saying nothing political too much in my music, though some right. of it is. But it's like they just kind of label it like that right now. I feel like it it works for me in a large you know percentage because I am different, like just off beat. I look Samoan with hair and I'm speaking something differently than the other person mm -hmm. would. So it works for me to a degree in the essence of standing out. But it also works against me because a lot of times people are so ingrained and grooved with that that sound that they used to. Like if it's not stick music or if it's not like Miami bass music, it'll be really hard for them to adopt it. Or trap. Or know? trap music, mm -hmm. you know, something that's straight out the out the gutter or something that sounds like that. Right. My stuff is still out the gutter, like it's out the mud. But it's just, I love creativity, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm probably the one of the only rappers in Miami that will be in The Office or The Lex or King of Diamonds like with an actual backpack on. <laughs> Or in Cafe Guan is like rapping his lyrical stuff when people kind of came for different kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about how it works for you and let's get a little bit more detail how it works for you and how it doesn't work for you. Like, I'll start you off. Like, um, I saw you at uh, my boy's spot the other day. He, he, um, he was doing a forum mm. and, you know, everybody was speaking. I remember I came in and, and yeah. shot a couple words and stuff like that. But um, I see people, they have such an affection for you. It's mostly older people who still love hip hop, mm. you know what I mean? Because you remind them of that backpack era. You remind them of the difference of, you know, being able to be creative and talk about different things and not just, not just follow the pro quo, right? Mm -hmm. So you tend to seem to have a lot of uh, people who, you know, like corporate or people who can like, you know, 
uh, give you some cool opportunities to maybe rap and, you know, for a different audience or a, or be safe or stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I see that as being a positive thing for you because it sets you different. But then on the flip side, um, you may not get your song played on the radio or you may not, you know, fit, you know, in a, a lineup for, let's just say, I'm just making it up a rolling loud or some or a trap festival or you know stuff like that. So, how do you deal with that the positives and some of the negatives that come with your style? Mm, that like that's a great like appreciation and thank you for that. I say that cuz yeah, I do see you in a lot of these same spots, you know, like mm. some like community talks, things for the yeah. culture, things for the people, and so I I want to just thank you for that cuz some people in your position wouldn't do that, you know, like you if you got a way to get away and stay away, they do that. But like, I actually see you in, I've seen you at the reggae festivals and the food trucks and like, I've seen you in it. Right. With everybody who's like still in it. Um, I think that I appreciate that. And, and it is true. I do have like a lot of older fans who like it because of what I remind them of. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, I just like paying homage. I just like listening to great music. That's amazing. And that gives you a certain feeling. Like I spent the last three weeks listening to Sam Cooke, you know, for no reason in particular, it's just amazing to me. Like there's something in this, that is not in the music that's coming out right now. I don't know what it is, but I, I have to find it in myself and in people and like put it into the music and bring that out because there's a reason why this music lasts forever. And I want my stuff to last forever, not just for me, but so you can have a soundtrack to your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I was telling people recently, I just found out why I make music because I had to a answer the question myself. I make music for people who feel unseen. I make music for the diamond in the rough. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's literally what I am. You know, so but I so do you understand what comes with that, and you've accepted that? I mean, yeah, because you're right. It does. It does come with its barriers. As like, I'm not. I may not get casted onto Rolling Loud immediately. I won't be their first choice. Right. You know, or I won't be the first choice to. Oh, this song is definitely radio ready. Let's run it up. Even though I do have records that are like that, I do understand its barriers. But for me, I ask for a good life, and I feel like when you ask for a good life, you gotta understand you're not asking for an easy life. They're not the same. You know, you can ask for an easy life, and it probably won't be good. Or you can ask for a good life, and it probably won't be easy. So that's what I think. That's what's up, man. Um, let's talk about your music, man. You got some uh, joints out right now that you want to tell us about and yes. that you're yes. excited about. Super excited about. So the music I just dropped right now is my favorite music I ever made in my life. Like it's like it's incredible. And I have actually we have four other projects that are getting released over the course of the next twelve months. So I actually have enough music and it's already set in stone to drop until next summer, which is good. But at the same time, the music that I just dropped right now this summer is the Glass EP. It's on all streaming sites and the Glass single. So it's three the Glass. Songs. So it's Glass. Right. Yeah, Glass. So the, the single is called Glass, and it's part of a three-song EP project called Glass EP. Got you, got yeah. you. Why Glass? Such a beautiful question. And a lot of people ask me that because I'm not saying nothing about Glass in the song. The song is just hard-hitting, and it's it, the song represents a breakthrough. Mm. And... For me, when I had to choose a name for it, I mean, this song represents a breakthrough so much, and what breaks better than glass? Right. And that just was it. Like, it was, it's elemental, it's in the earth, it, here you go. Right, that's related to glass ceilings, like breaking through that. Glass and, and ceiling, breaking like through glass, yeah. like elevating, getting to the next level, or just a breakthrough in general. Like, um, I heard somebody say one time, they was like, oh, this person's about to have a breakdown. It's like, nah, he said, like, I'm about to have a breakthrough. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's a great way to reframe it. Right, you know, you exactly. Might say, it doesn't like, have to be a negative thing, even exactly. if it doesn't look great. Exactly. You yeah. might be going through something, and, but but inside of your spirit, something might be telling you, this is for your ultimate greater good. Right. You know, so it's like it depends on how you choose to perceive it. So, yeah, glass represents a breakthrough, and, and that's what this this project is. That's what this body of work is. That's amazing, man. That's pretty dope, man. I'm, well, I'm excited for you, brother. Thank you know you, what I'm man. saying? Glass, right? Glass. And it's available everywhere right now. All streaming sites available everywhere on YouTube, on everywhere. Yeah. Glass. Do you have uh, some performances coming up and some opportunities for people to yes. come and see you? And Yeah, so we're actually setting up a release concert for it. Um, okay. And I got to kind of change the name of it because every time I say release concert, I think they hear relief concert. Okay. And they think I'm trying to like <laughs> raise money for some. Right, right. So I'm like, nah, I'm just going to have a, a concert coming right. up soon. Um, it's scheduled for the first week of September. I don't have all the details right now, but we, we just finished talking to the owner of this really cool venue in Miami that has never activated what we want to activate. 
And so we're just in the talks of it right now, but it's, it's scheduled for the first uh, week of September. So. Oh, cool. So make sure you let us know, man. Yes. You know, yeah, we got to support that. I want to see you out there and I want to see the food that you bring in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I need you to bring, I need you to cater it because I know you're a food, you know, guy. You so. know, I love my food, man. Come on, come on. Um, how's my homegirl doing, man? Oh, man, she's amazing. She's amazing. Um, Shan Moreno, my fiance, incredible actress. Um, it's, it's tough right now because, you know, the strike that's going on. Yeah, like it that. is. Mm -hmm. But for the actors who have already put out their work and that's, like coming out now, I've done the work a year ago, shot it. It's amazing. She's doing really well. She just dropped a brand new movie called When Girls Ride. So we got a brand new movie. You know, anything she do, I'm in it. So we just got a brand new movie on Peacock right now called When Girls Ride. Y'all got to go check it out. And then another movie's dropping uh, next month called Lanier. It's about the Lake Lanier in Atlanta, how oh, it's haunted okay. and crazy and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So she got she got a lot of cool stuff coming out Super right now. Super dope, man. Please give her my regards and congratulations on that, man. No, absolutely. That's man. exciting. She love you, too. She always talk about yeah, you. Yeah, I got yeah. mad love for her, man. Yeah. That's why I always ask for her, you know? And then when I seen you guys connect, I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> man, yo, that, that was 11 years ago. We've been rocking for 11 yeah, years. Yeah, just, just to tell you, man, I, I even remember you guys did... You guys went to New York and did some photos, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Why would yeah. I remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, we I'm breathtaking invested. out here. You know what I'm saying? We, we're doing the best we can out here. You know, we were showstoppers out here. You know I, mean? <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. Please let everybody know how they can connect with you, get to know you better, whether you got a website or it's your social media. Let them know. Yes, man. Follow me online, King Hoodie Raps, on all social media platforms, everything, YouTube, Big O, Instagram, Threads. X, well, I think that's what it is now. Mm -hmm. Like, follow me on all social media platforms, and also I got a brand new members only area called For the Homies. So it's frthehomies.com, and that's like exclusive stuff for super fans, but oh. also other creatives that want to connect with each other. We got people in there that are fans, but are also creative. So now they're in there working on their own projects and stuff. So it's really cool to see. Super dope, man. I'm so happy you took the time to come through, man. You're always welcome here. So proud of you. Let everybody know the name of the project. Yes, Glass EP right now. The single is Glass. The EP is Glass. Go and listen to it. King Hoodie in the building, y'all. Boom. You know the vibes. Famous Friday. Boom. <laughs> we up in here. Shout out Papa Keith, man. You know what I'm saying? Follow me at my, my third social media channel. It's called Papa Keith, Papa underscore Keith. You feel me? That's where you can find that's where you can find all the King Hoodie, everything, you know, about it. So get get with me. Get with me. Definitely get with gonna me. be on there. Definitely. <laughs> that's facts. That's right. That's right. Perfect, man.